The Microsoft Surface Pro 11 has been out for a month now, and I thought I would take you through the good, the bad, and the slightly weird about this new device, and why I still think it's one of the best Surface products to date. So this review isn't going to be heavy on the specs or on benchmarking. This is more of a how does it actually perform day to day. So with that, let's get going. When you take it out of the box, this actually looks very similar to the previous generation. And in fact, if you look at my unboxing video where I go through it side by side, there's very little that's changed except for a few minor differences here and there. In fact, the actual overall design is pretty similar to what came actually over a decade ago when the very first Surface device, the Surface RT, was released in, back in 2012. And in a way, that's a testament to how groundbreaking the form factor was way back then, that there just has to be minor tweaks here and there to keep it current and fresh. Now, just looking around, there's a few little changes here and there. The camera itself looks like it's a bigger module, so it's been upgraded. The screens have a nice little corner where it's more rounded and it looks a bit more modern. The one that I have is the OLED version with the Snapdragon X Elite, which is the first noticeable thing the moment you turn it on. The one downside of the OLED panel is that it has no anti-reflective coating whatsoever from the look of it. Even inside, you can see that there is a substantial glare. That said, in the dark, it looks amazing. Along with the Surface Pro 11, I invested in upgrading to the new Flex keyboard. And this is a pretty expensive add-on. The biggest difference is the wider trackpad, as well as a new design where the Surface Slim Pen sits. It is now exposed at all times if you want to take notes. And also, you can flip this little flippy thing around and it works as a wireless keyboard as well. There's some changes to the buttons with a, a dedicated screenshot button. So you can press that to turn on the Windows snipping tool and a dedicated co-pilot key to access the AI features. The Slim Pen itself hasn't had any huge design changes. It's a bit of a weird design where it's flat, so it's compact. But that said, I've actually quite enjoyed using it. For such a flat and compact device, it actually feels pretty good in the hand. Now, those are the differences against the previous generation. Like I said, the first device was actually unveiled in October in 2012, so nearly 12 years ago now. The very first device actually ran on ARM or and ran a version of Windows called Windows RT. And in a way, after 12 years, this feels like we finally got to what Microsoft had originally envisioned, a device that runs a full version of Windows on ARM64 and has amazing battery life and performance. The essence of the Surface device is the fact that it's a two-in-one device. It can be used in the traditional laptop way, or you can take off the keyboard and use it as a tablet. Not the best for sitting on the lap because it obviously needs the kickstand to keep it supported and can be a bit wobbly. You can use the kickstand to essentially have it nearly flat so you can be sketching or writing. And now having the wireless keyboard adds to the versatility. So what's it like in day-to-day -day use? Firstly, as compared to the previous version, it feels far more responsive. Menus are slightly less laggy. Apps just seem to launch that tiny bit more snappier. Though it's not a fanless device, it does have little air vents and a fan that occasionally turns on. This is pretty rare. And even when the fans actually turn on, I found that they're significantly quieter than the previous generation. In terms of performance, this device is perfect for my use case. I tend to use a bit of Word, Excel, a web browser, Spotify, with the occasional bit of editing either in Photoshop or Filmora for videos. The amazing thing here is that the apps that I use are a combination of native ARM64, which are still fairly limited, and original x86 ones. I really can't tell a difference most of the time. That is pretty amazing. Emulation on Windows has never really worked this seamlessly. One quirk I've noticed is for the first time you open up certain apps that are, I assume, x86, it does take a little bit of time to load up. I believe this is to do with how the emulation engine runs. The second quirk that actually bugs my daily workflow is that quick share or nearby share, which is how I transfer everything from my Galaxy phone onto the laptop, isn't actually supported on ARM64. Now I find this a little bit weird because it's an app on all Snapdragon processors and this is a Snapdragon processor. So I'm not sure entirely why that's the case, but right now, if you need to transfer files, you either have to use Windows Phone Link, which still does work, or actually use a third-party service. What actually surprised me the most about this product was that they seem to have finally nailed it. After 12 years of iterating, 
This version just works great out of the box. There's hardly any software quirks. And apart from the few things that I've mentioned, it generally just works. Gaming on the device, which is not its original intended use case, is also a little bit weird. It's a thin and light laptop and it was never gonna have the performance for up-to-date AAA titles. But I used to play Dota on the previous generation quite often and it ran fine. In the current version, it also plays fine, but it almost feels like you're playing on a slightly laggy internet connection, even if it's a local game. You get these little changes in speed, like where it slows down a little bit and speeds up. Just enough to be noticeable, not enough to affect gameplay, but it is there. And in fact, I saw the same thing when I ran a couple of the benchmarks. See if you can notice it on these clips where it just, it, it's smooth, but there's just something not right about the pace. And I wonder if that's due to the drivers of the Adreno GPUs emulating DirectX and everything else that goes into making games work on Windows. So I wouldn't call it a gaming device, but for light gaming, it's fine. One of the other big differences I've noticed in the day-to-day -day is that the performance of the device barely changes between being plugged in versus unplugged. In fact, I was actually editing a video and I didn't realize I hadn't plugged the device in. There was hardly any slowdown. This never used to be the case with the old Surface devices. There was a significant performance drop if it was unplugged and running on battery. The cameras have been upgraded as well. The rear camera seems to be sharper, which I've rarely used in the previous devices. It is occasionally useful to take photos of receipts, but by and large, it's not something that I use on the day-to-day. -day. The front-facing webcam, however, is something that I use for a lot of Zoom calls and podcasts. There is the ability to use the Windows Studio effects to blur the background more intelligently, as well as apply creative filters to your face and change the dynamic lighting. Because the camera has a wider field of view, the software now supports auto reframing as well. Given that the Surface Pro 11 is meant to be a thin and light device, battery life is quite a big consideration. With the previous generation, I found that I was roughly getting four hours of screen on time, even if I was doing just light editing work, like a Word document, for example. With this new Surface Pro 11, that is significantly better. To give you some context, I took it off charge at the beginning of a work day, did a couple of hours of emails, Word documents, and even some light video editing. When I opened up the Surface Pro the next day, there was still more than 75% of charge left. In fact, I finally got to the 5% battery warning three days later of doing just some light work. Now, being a doctor, I'm not on the computer all the time, so your usage might vary, but I genuinely think that you'll get a solid day's worth of work without having to plug it in. I'll do some further testings and update you in a future video. These entire new generations of PCs are called Copilot Plus PCs. And this is a little bit hard to review because a lot of these functions are not just the hardware or the device, but it's the combination with Windows that allows you to access these features. A lot of this is still based on processing in the cloud. The Copilot key does reduce the friction in accessing ChatGPT or DALI. In fact, I used it to create a thumbnail for this video. I even got it to generate a script, but even Copilot says that the feature is a little bit gimmicky. There's a built-in image co-creator into Paint now, which is pretty cool in concept. In essence, you can give it a very rough sketch and give it a prompt, and it will try to convert your drawing into something brand new. My little version of a stick figure house turned out quite nice. As the feature gets refined, it might actually be something quite interesting if you had any specifics that you wanted to actually draw but didn't have the artistic ability like myself to get it done. The other AI features are the camera effect as well as a live subtitle slash translate feature. It does an okay job in terms of getting you the general gist, but as you can see with the actual closed captioning, it's not quite right. Final thoughts. So I personally love this device. This Surface Pro 11 2024 edition, whatever you want to call it, finally feels like the device that Microsoft originally dreamt of when it released the Surface RT way back in 2012. And after a decade of refinement, it's finally here. It is the perfect balance between power, portability, and persistence. I needed the last P that's for battery life. So for me, it gets a big thumbs up. I have absolutely loved using this. And it's not without its quirks. 
and there's definitely ways that it could be refined for the next generation. But for now, this is one of my favorite devices of 2024. If you enjoyed this, you might like to see this video here and I'll catch you in the next one.